Hi, my name's uh, Jake Bossenkemper, Agronomy Lead with Look and Grow. And today, for our video, we have Lance Getch. Lance is a technical agronomist for Bayer Crop Sciences, the Cal Basgro specifically. Lance, it says behind us, if you build it, uh, they will come. I hear you're building some things at Bayer Crop Sciences. Yeah, so today we're at the Field of Dreams, and we just went through some of our show plots and some of the cool technologies uh, that we're bringing out to the industry um, over the next couple years were showcased over there. And some, one of those technologies is SmartStacks Pro, and we actually have several customers of yours that got a little bit of taste of that this year. So we're pretty Absolutely. excited to, uh, to expand on that over the next several years. Yeah, well, let's go talk about it, Lance. Yeah. So Lance, we talked a little bit about if you build it, they will come. You've built SmartStacks Pro. Can you fill us in on some of the more details of it? Yeah, so SmartStacks Pro, we finally have out in fields this year with growers, and it's really exciting, uh, especially those guys that have corn on corn acres. They're finally having uh, a new option to help control the corn rootworm population and really control that feeding. And one of the things that we've done over the last several years is do a lot of these node injury scale um, uh, score ratings and we found that you know there are several options in the industry to control corn rootworm but the most feeding so the higher score which is a bad thing um, occurs with several of these other options that have been used traditionally and we find that as you add more traits the amount of feeding on the roots decreases significantly and the smart stacks pro which brings a third mode of action for corn rootworm a brand new one uh, gives us the best control for corn rootworm. So we're really, really excited about having this new option uh, in the industry. So Lance, I would say this, what you've just discussed here has the potential to be a game changer for the industry. As you all know, or probably know, over the last several years, we've had a large increase in the population of rootworm. We've, some of the traits haven't been performing as well as we'd like them to perform. So this new mode of action is gonna be very important for those of you who had problems. And I highly recommend that you get out in your fields this year and take a look with your liquor grow salesman. We've had a lot of good growing conditions, which may be masking some of the rootworm feeding that's out there. So I get out and take a look to know if you need this trait for the 2023 growing season. We're done, right, Lance? Nope, We're nope, done, nope. right, Lance? I couldn't what? let you get away. Oh, I forgot. So okay. we do have more technologies coming out. All right. All and, right. and one of them is uh, the short corn hybrids. And I will be short with this as much as I can, but there's a lot to discuss, yeah. and it's very, very exciting. Okay, so it is very, very exciting, and I am really, really amped about this new technology. So, Lance, it's been my observation in research trials as well as the production fields. We do all this high yield management in good soils. We get really tall corn planted at high populations and sometimes it blows over, particularly in these high yield environments. So I think this is going to be the answer for that. Can you tell us about it? It definitely will. So with these short corn hybrids, we've uh, really compacted those lower nodes in, in those plants to shorten the hybrid up, which gives us better stalk strength and uh, a lot better um, root strength as well. And between these two hybrids, on the left here is a short corn hybrid and you can see the girth of this stalk is quite a bit bigger. And this is at 40,000 plants per acre. And a traditional hybrid that you see on the right is quite a bit narrower and uh, can lead to some stock quality issues late season. And uh, with the short corn hybrids, we're, we're seeing that um, you can see the inner node spacing, as I'm showing here on the left, is quite a bit smaller than what you see on a traditional hybrid where it's more spaced out. And then with the ears themselves, a traditional hybrid uh, starts to develop smaller ears at 40,000 po population, where that short corn hybrid is more fixed and keeps that same ear size regardless of, of, the, of the population. So thank you, thank you for that, Lance. There's a lot we could talk about, I only have so much time. I just wanna briefly mention that, you know, if, if in school you heard about the Green Revolution where they dwarfed wheat. They dwarfed wheat because they couldn't get wheat to stand and yield when they applied nitrogen fertilizer to it. This is a very similar approach we're going to be able to dwarf corn and be able to get it to stand in these high yield conditions. I think it's going to be a game changer. Yep. So corn is a grass species just like wheat and sorghum. And we've already dwarfed sorghum and we've already dwarfed wheat. So it only makes logical sense that we do the same thing with corn, and uh, which allows us agronomically to improve the stalks and roots and get to that next yield level. All right. Thank you, Lance.